Hello everyone. Welcome to uh, Navigo's uh, LBN Insta Freight Connection demo. I am Bimal, working as a consulting manager based out of Chicago office. I am accompanied by Akshat, uh, who is a senior consultant based out of San Mateo office, US. Um, today we are going to showcase a broadcast entering scenario with Insta Freight as one of the carrier. Uh, Insta Freight is a digital freight network who has services for full truckload scenario in European regions as of now. Um, we have previously showcased a uh, demo for Uber Freight. Um, if someone has not seen, please feel free to see that video in Novigo website. Uber Freight is again a, a digital freight network who has services in US as of now, and uh, that uh, video is available. Now, uh, in this scenario, we are uh, trying to do a little bit complex scenario, not a typical broadcast entering scenario. Uh, here we call it a price discovery. Here in this scenario, we are uh, mixing carriers which have uh, freight agreements in the system and uh, with the carriers who are not having freight agreements in the system. For example, Insta Freight is not having a freight agreement and we are expecting a, a spot or market rate from the um, uh, from Insta Freight, whereas for Carrier 1 and Carrier 2, we have uh, negotiated uh, freight agreements in the system and uh, uh, we uh, will be sending it out accordingly. So as a start, uh, we start with uh, SAP TM freight order. We assume that the planning is complete and the freight order is uh, uh, ready for uh, tendering and uh, uh, for full truckload. Uh, so we use a tendering profile and send the request out to all the three carriers together, and that is what a, a broadcast tendering is all about. Uh, Insta Freight uh, will receive the request through LBN and instantly, uh, instantaneously re uh, respond a spot market, uh, spot or market rate. Whereas for Carrier One and Carrier Two, we have mapped it to Novigo's uh, test LBN tenant, Carrier tenant. And uh, we will be logging into those tenants uh, on behalf of the carriers and uh, responding to the request. Um, but in the real world scenarios, uh, uh, these carrier tenants will be handled uh, by the carrier itself and no one else will have the access to it. Uh, while responding, these uh, two carriers uh, will be able to see the rate, but it is non-negotiated rates. So uh, they can either reject it or uh, uh, confirm it. Um, and uh, these uh, rates will be uh, received back in TM and we will be evaluating these rates along with the um, Insta freight rates. Uh, so here we are actually comparing uh, the contracted rates with the spot market rate uh, and uh, awarding it to the cheapest uh, carrier. In this specific scenario, we are awarding it to Insta freight. And uh, once it is awarded, we will be sending the freight order for confirmation to Insta Freight through LBN. And again, uh, Insta Freight uh, can confirm it uh, uh, through LBN instantaneously. Um, once the uh, we are taking this demo a little bit uh, further uh, to showcase the end to end scenario in freight settlement. So we will be showcasing the quoted amount showing up in the freight order charges tab. Then we will be creating a freight settlement document and uh, we will be posting it for accruals. This will create a service PO and service entry sheet. Insta Freight uh, can be modeled for a self billing scenario as uh, we, we don't expect a invoice document coming from uh, Insta Freight. So uh, we will use the evaluated receipt settlement process, which is called the ERS process uh, in S4 uh, through MRRL uh, transaction. And uh, we will create a uh, invoice against the settlement and freight order in uh, S4 directly and this invoice document will be later on used for payment and the amount in that invoice document will be exactly same as the quoted amount by the Insta freight. Uh, Akshat will showcase this in the system and uh, yeah Akshat uh, over to you. Uh, thanks Vimal. So I will directly go into the system. Here we have a freight order. Um, it starts from point in Waldorf, goes to Hamburg. Uh, departure date is 6th of February. Uh, arrival date is 10th of February. Um, <clears throat> I will directly start the tendering process for this uh, freight order. So I see, uh, for, I will once I start the tendering process, uh, I will see the list of carriers. So, so I have started the tendering process. Now I will see that I see that there are three carriers, two of which are contracted, and one is 131, which is Instafreight carrier. 
So I see that instruct rate carrier, it returned the spot rate of 809 euros instantaneously. For the other two carriers, which are CTS Fed and Menat, um, these are contracted carriers. Um, in our scenario, we have both of these uh, using the same uh, carrier test tenant, but in ideal scenario, both of these um, would have uh, their respective carrier tenants, wherein they will be able to see their respective tenders and respond. So next I will go and go ahead and log in into uh, the carrier tenant where I'll be acting as CTS Fed and Menat. Um, <clears throat> so I am next logging into carrier LBN carrier tenant. This is the test tenant. Um, <clears throat> I see that as a carrier, I have uh, some requests for quotation over here. So once I go ahead and open this application, I see that uh, I have 2484 and 2482, uh, which are the recent ones which were sent, 2482 and 2484. Um, as a carrier, I can go ahead and open it, and I can see that since these were contracted rates, these are non-negotiable for one of the carriers is 1250 euros, and for the other carrier, it's uh, 1000, 1000 euros, which is basically the same amounts as in the freight order. So next, uh, I'm back in LBN. I will go ahead <clears throat> and as a carrier, I will go ahead and accept both of these tenders. So I accepted one of those. That was the first carrier, and this is the second carrier going ahead and accepting these two uh, tenders. Now back uh, into S4, I will refresh it, and I see that the acceptance which was sent via LBN from each of those those two carriers, it's reflected over here. I see that all the three have accepted. The first and the third are contracted, and the second, which is the Insta Freight carrier, is the <clears throat> is the spot market carrier. Um, just to see the statuses as to what's happening. So I see that it's uh, in tendering and no confirmation yet because we haven't awarded the carrier yet. So back, if I go into subcontracting, I see that Insta Freight carrier is the cheapest among these three carriers. Um, so I can go ahead and award this. Uh, freight order to Insta Freight. So <clears throat> I'm doing this step manually here, but um, this can completely be automated using a background job, uh, which will automatically award this uh, order to the cheapest carrier or whatever strategy we might want to use for awarding the orders to the carrier. So I will go ahead and do the awarding of this carrier. So I will see that this was awarded to Insta Freight carrier, the other two were rejected. I will go ahead and save it. So I save it and then I see that uh, this was awarded to Insta Freight Carrier. If I go into the stat statuses tab, if I refresh it, I see that the subcontracting status is sent and the confirmation Insta Freight instantaneously confirms the uh, confirms this order. So now <clears throat> if I take a look at the charges which are there in this freight order, I see that Insta Freight had quoted 809 euros, um, which is present in this charges tab of this order. Um, as in, as um, to start the accruals process, I can create a freight settlement document. So I will create, go ahead and create a freight settlement document. Um, and once this freight settlement document is uh, created and posted, it will create the um, documents which are necessary for accruing the costs and payment to the carrier. So I will, <coughs> this freight segment is posted. And if I come back to the freight order in the document flow, I see that the respective documents, purchase order and service entry sheet are created. Um, <coughs> now the next um, and the important step is, um, since Insta Freight won't be sending me an invoice, I can directly go ahead and create an invoice in MRRL transactions. So that's what I will go ahead and do next. I go, go to the MRRL transaction and here um, <clears throat> I can see that uh, I have uh, a option to settle the document. So I will go ahead and click that button. It will ask me to enter the freight order number. Now I will go ahead and take this freight order number ending in 7905. I will enter it here. And once I do this, once I execute this transaction, it will automatically create an invoice. So I see an invoice was created over here. This invoice would have <clears throat> exactly the same amount, which is to be paid to Insta Freight. Um, I see the 809 euros, which was present in the freight order. And 
Uh, this can then be used for payment to Insta Freight. Now, if I come back to the freight order in the document flow, I will also be able to see this invoice which I just created. So I see that <clears throat> this invoice, which was which we created in MRRL transaction, we can also see it in the freight order over here. Um, <clears throat> and this can then be used to directly pay Insta Freight. Um, so that was uh, that. This concludes the Insta Freight S4 uh, demo. Thank you for watching.